Array is really useful because it lets you group values to build more complex data structures. It's an easy way to store a collection of elements you can access by their position or index. Objects take that concept further by providing a way to structure related data that's easy to read and manipulate using key value pairs. It's really common to combine the two by making an array of objects. Let's look at an example. To code along with me, first download the course folder from the link in the description below and open it with your favorite code editor. Here I'm using Visual Studio Code. From the course folder, open the exercise folder called JavaScript Objects. And then open the index.html file in the browser. In the index.html file, remember to link store.js file. In the store.js file, you'll find the program we wrote in the previous lecture about JavaScript arrays. What we have here first is a multi-dimensional array called cities. It holds 10 nested arrays and each nested array has three different types of items, such as city name, country name, and total population. Then we have a function called generate list items. Its main job is to look through this city's array, access each nested array and its content, structure a message using template literal, mark up each message with the li tags on each loop, and after the loop is done, assign all the list items to the items variable using the addition assignment operator. Finally, we have this block. Its main job is to call the generate list items function, mark up the returned list items with ol tags, and finally, display it inside the main element in the index.html file. Okay, so now let's see how it looks in the browser. You can also find the link of the previous lecture that we made this program from the description below. Of course this works, but at first glance, it's not immediately clear what these pieces of information mean. Another developer looking at this code might have to spend a little extra time to figure it out. One of the best parts about using objects is that they let you use distinct names to identify individual items. This makes objects more efficient to work with than arrays. So let's convert this array of arrays into an array of objects. That way we can use property names to identify the data. I'll start with the first array element. I'll replace the square brackets with curly braces. And add a property name and a colon before each value. First, city. Then, country. Finally, population. I'll repeat this for the rest of the elements in this array. You can also copy these objects from the exercise folder. First open the exercise folder called JavaScript Objects. Then open the folder called Data. Then select the file called StoreData.js. Good. I have converted each element from an array to an object. Now let's look at the code inside the for loop where you access the city name, country name, and total population. As you can see, we had to use two sets of square brackets to access an element inside a nested array. We can now simplify this code and make it more readable by removing the second index notation and adding a property name like this. I'll do the same for the country and the population. Even though the two-dimensional array got the job done, developers often use this approach when using related data that can be defined by a set of characteristics or properties. I'll save the change. Refresh the page. As you can see, the program still works as expected.